Hello and welcome back to the Beefy Tech channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to properly set up a 7950X3D. I'll give you some really easy to copy RAM timings and I'll also be teaching you how to undervolt the 7950X3D so you can maximize your performance. First things first, I want to mention you will want to have your BIOS and your chipset drivers fully updated. And as a fair note, CPU-Z right here, as you can see, says your manufacturer and model name of the motherboard that you have. And you're going to want to take this and go into Google Chrome and find your uh, motherboard's BIOS update, which for me, it's going to be the Steel Legend X670E right here. This is the chipset driver for it. And in this tab, I have the um, BIOS update for it, which is a GSA Combo M5 for the Steel Legend. And uh, you're going to want to be on the latest version on both of these before you can do virtually anything. Otherwise, you won't have access to a lot of the BIOS functions. The applications you're going to want to be able to tell all of the stuff that I have over here is going to be CPU ID, CPU Z over here, which will tell you your motherboard. It'll tell you timings and it'll tell you data about your CPU. And the other one is AMD Ryzen Master. With this one, you can see all the power limits that you have, the undervolts, and also you can double check that the correct CCD is being used for the applications that you want to use. I have in BIOS set it to prefer CCD0, which is the CCD with cache. So in BIOS, you'd have to go in your motherboard and just set prefer cache within the certain section that it's in. Now, you can also disable CCD1, but if you do set it to prefer cache, it will work as intended and CCD1 will nearly never be used unless you're doing, let's say, editing or you're using all of your CPU cores for a certain task. Ideally, if you have a 7950X3D, you're gonna just buy an x pocket and then tune it to the RAM timings that I'll be giving you. You, of course, can get a much fancier Hynix ADI 7200 kit and tune it far more aggressively, but for the cheapest bang-for-buck solution, AMD x kits, as you can see here on the AMD website, are the best solution. If you can't find an AMD x kit, your next best solution is this Kingston memory that is 6400 CL32, Take it down to 6200 or 6000, copy the timings and you should be pretty much okay. Now, I cannot guarantee it's going to run stable at 6200 or 6400 with the timings that I have because the timings are designed for 6000, but it's a great solution if you can't find another kit around your area. Before we go into the BIOS settings and I give you all the timings for the RAM and also show you how to undervolt your 7950X3D to improve performance, I want to highlight that it is absolutely mandatory to be on your latest BIOS version and on the latest chipset driver version. If you do not know how to update them, I highly recommend you look it up and you learn how to do it because without those two things being fully updated, your 7950X3D will not have all the features that it needs to be able to do undervolting, to be able to do prefer cache in BIOS. So you want to be fully updated. Anyway, let's go into the BIOS and let me show you how I've set everything up. All right, guys, we are now in the BIOS and I'll just walk you through what I did with my motherboard and my CPU to get the best performance out of it. Mind you, I have the 6430 SCL32 kit and I detuned it to 6000 and then tightened the timing severely. So let's quickly go over the first things. So I have my TJ Max, which is the platform thermal throttle limit set to 89. This is the safe limit for it, and you guys could probably set it lower for quite similar performance. But whenever you're going to be in a CPU bottleneck scenario, it will actually reach near TJ Maxx, so near that temperature limit. My recommendation is do 85 if you're not comfortable to reaching up to 89, but if you're comfortable, 89 will do, uh, give you the best performance. You can skip over GFX overclocking and then go to DRAM frequency. Right here, I have it set to 6000 despite my kit being a 6400. Now, the reason I have it set to 6000 is because I set XMP2 over here, and XMP2 has this profile already written down. I selected it and then went and tweaked the DRAM timing myself. All right, before I go into detail with all the timings, I want to mention that these timings are not my own. I took them directly from the video where Hardware Unboxed received timings from Buildzoid for a generic 6000 kit that are very tight, but not by all means not the tightest possible. So this will work on 90% of all of 6000 kits out there, and you can most likely copy it yourself, set the voltage to 1.4 volts on the DRAM, and you'll be perfectly fine. Let me quickly walk you through the timings, and by that I mean I'll just scroll and you can copy them. I'll pause here for a second as this is where it ends. I did not really do much with the timings down here because they didn't really give that for the video over there, but you can actually tune further than this and get better results. My kit is a generic kit though, so I only did this much. To finish off with the RAM section of the whole BIOS part, 
I wanted to mention you do need to set all of your voltages to 1.4 except this one this is a different one mind you but you want the main RAM voltage to be 1.4 for those timings to be stable. On another note, the Infinity Fabric, you can generally set a 2000 and have perfect results when your RAM is 6000. And you want to make sure that the UCLC, UCLK, sorry, divider mode is set to UCLK equals memory. This will have the best performance. Now that we are done with that part, I quickly want to dispel a little myth. So we're going to go into advanced and we're going to go into CPU configuration. I've seen a lot of people saying that disabling SMT is actually good for the 7950X3D. And I did a benchmark to check for myself because I obviously want the maximum performance. But when I did the benchmark with SMT disabled, I got 40 less frames average within said benchmark. So from my testing, SMT is not better. And I do recommend if you guys believe SMT off to be better, test it yourselves. See if it works for you. And if it does, keep it off. If it doesn't, turn it back on. Because for me, SMT on or on auto, mind you, is much better than with it straight up off. Also in the advanced section, I'm going to show you guys that AMD CBS, sorry, the blue thing is uh, blocking it. Let me move it. AMD CBS is really important. You're going to want to go right here and click on it. And then you're going to want to go to SMU common options right here where my cursor is. And here you're going to have the CPPC dynamic preferred cores. This is the most important part of setting up a 7950X3D without using any other programs. If you want it to run at its best within games, you're going to have to set this to prefer cache. You can set it to any of these others, but if you set it to prefer frequency, it's going to use the wrong CCD. So you have to set it to prefer cache for the best performance. Once you've done that, come back to the advanced section in the BIOS. Mind you, I'm on an ASRock motherboard, so this might be a bit different for you. And then go to AMD overclocking. Once you go to AMD overclocking, click accept, and you're going to want to go to precision boost overdrive. As you can see, mine is already set to advanced, but yours will most likely be set to auto. What you're going to want to do is set it to advanced exactly like I did over here. Have also the plot platform thermal throttle limit set to 89, and then go to curve optimizer. And over here, you're going to require to do a bit of testing on your own because none of these numbers will apply to you directly. What I found to be stable for me is having a per core curve optimizer with a negative offset. You cannot do positive offset on CCD zero, which is the CCD with three K. So all of these will have to be a negative offset and you're going to want to find what works best for you. My personal recommendation is try negative and then put 20 in all of them, run a test, either play the game you play most or do a, what's it called? Benchmark, see if it's stable and then try up the numbers and see what works. But as a fair note, you want to do it only until core seven. Anything past core seven, you're going to CCD2. And at that point, you're not really benefiting from doing anything with Curve Optimizer because you don't want to use that CCD for any gaming either way. You could though go and do Curve Optimizer for CCD1, which is the second CCD, if you do professional work, let's say video editing, video rendering, it could actually be beneficial for you. But me, as somebody that plays video games strictly, I leave it alone, don't touch it, because I anyway don't want the PC to use it for games, mostly for background tasks, uh, tasks ideally. So run 20 on all of the first seven, well, first eight cores, but zero through seven, and then try up the numbers slowly and steadily until you top out, you get a crash, and then you bring the numbers back down to get the best curve optimizer settings. These will give you massive, massive gains within games and will also decrease your temperatures insanely. So I highly recommend you do this part. Once you have done all the changes in the BIOS and you're sure that they are exactly what you want and they look a lot like mine, you're going to want to go to exit and click save changes and exit. And that will confirm all the changes you made in your BIOS. All right, we are here in the Call of Duty benchmark so I can just demonstrate what the undervolt and the performance settings that we did in the BIOS do. As you may notice, the CPU clock is hanging around that 5.1515 mark, which is really, really good. All things considered, you can do higher, especially if you have like a full custom loop or more fans or better airflow than I do. Mind you, I'm on a 360mm AIO with a cooler master mesh case, so it's a pretty good scenario in terms of cooling, and yet it still can't really boost to 525, which is, by the way, the limit. But yes, with a better thermal solution than I have, which is a custom loop, mind you, you can actually lock 525 
or if you get a better under undervolt you can lock five to five but my cpu isn't a god bin it's a mediocre bin so i could only do negative 25 on two cores and negative 20 on the others regardless i just wanted to go over the performance settings and remind you that i am on a config file so that does make a difference anyway let me quickly remove this and as you can see the cpu results are really good 500 average fps in the uh, cpu section with 322 average fps in the lows for the cpu but i do want to mention my benchmark results are entirely bottlenecked by the 4090. i am fully aware that a 7900 xtx is indeed faster for the benchmark but i want to let you guys know that indeed if you test battle royale you would be getting quite similar performance to 4090 even if you're on a 7900 xtx that in the benchmark performs better let me quickly demonstrate battle royale performance Hey, we are here in Al Masra Highway, and as you can see, this is roughly the performance you should be seeing. I'm varying between 5.05 GHz to 5.1, and that's mostly thermal limitations, to be entirely honest with you. If I had better cooling solutions, I would most likely be able to hit 5.2. I mean, 5.25. As a fair note, if you manage to get a much better undervolt than I have, which is negative 25 on 2 and negative 20 on the other 6 cores on, the, on this one, you would actually see better performance because you'd be running cooler and it would be easier to maintain the frequencies. But for me, this is all I can do with the current undervolt and thermal limitations that I have. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching today's video and I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, comment in the comments section and I'll do my best to help you out. With that said, guys, have a nice day and peace.